Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back in Las Vegas talking to one of the most impressive and remarkable stars of Las Vegas 2015, Frederick De Silva. How are you? How are you doing, Alex? I'm really, really well. And it's always nice to find somebody new and brilliant. And you've got this show, Paranormal, which is on at Bally's in Las Vegas at 4 p.m. And there you are, this humble show that was full on Sunday. And you literally blew me away from the second the curtain rose with this sort of mind-reading manipulation stuff it's very very worrying because I feel any moment now you're going to nick my wallet or steal something from me which I already did by the way <laughs> yeah it's very interesting uh, it's, it's a different kind of magic I always have been fascinated with with magicians and when I was a little child uh, I was an illusionist and then I was fascinated with hypnosis uh, because I was f- thinking if I was the best hypnotist in the world I could make people believe that I'm also the best magician because I could hypnotize people and make them believe that amazing thing happened on stage as a magician so I was uh, I was fascinated with all this type of entertainment I tried to put all of them together and I create that show Paranormal at at Bally's. This is a lifetime's work, isn't it? I mean, you've put this show together. Um, Tell us about how you started because this isn't an American accent. There you were born in France via Portugal and then you arrive here in Las Vegas. This has always been the dream. Right. Actually, it took me 15 years before I could get my 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 contract with with Bally's. Uh, when I was 18 years old, my my family, uh, as a gift, gave me a trip to Las Vegas, and and for some mysterious reason, I, I immediately felt that that this was the the place where I would like to perform for the rest of my life. And, and that was uh, it has been a big challenge. During 15 years, I was working three weeks in France doing private shows and get enough money to be able to book a flight to Las Vegas again. And then everybody told me that I had no way to have my show in Las Vegas. People told me Cirque du Soleil is taking the, all the shows and then you have the million production shows of, of magicians. And I just had no money. I, had, I couldn't compete with this big illusion illusionist. So I tried to figure out a show where, well, I, where I would not need props or, or nothing, but just using my mind. And, and that was the challenge of paranormal. And I guess that's why people like it because there is, there is no props, there is no production. It's just one, one man on stage and trying to do some what is the closest miracles if miracles really would exist that would that would be what what the show paranormal shows i guess and it's not very often i get to see something new because when you do as many shows as i see you see the same illusions over and over again even when you see the mentalists here in las vegas they're doing the same sort of stuff yours is really clever because it's more manipulation what's fascinating is the audience can't work out how he does it and that's why it's so compelling for 90 minutes how do you do it well, it's a mix of techniques as, as magic hypnosis and, and body language and what we call NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programmation. At the very instance, you have to be fascinated with, with people. And, and, and that what motivates me is every day have different people on stage and you have to figure out as quick as you can how, how their mind works and try to, to surprise them by going... Uh, your mind has to go faster than their mind so you can put ideas without being noticed and work with the subconscious of people and 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 try to amaze them in doing some things that people really can't understand and because it's complicated to create uh, the construction of the show that the secret is not is not the easy way it becomes too complicated for people to understand how it works because because so many things happen every second that when it goes so fast, sometimes you, you don't see it. If, if a car goes so fast, you just don't see that the car just was here in front of you. And, and I believe that in the art of, of mental magic, when something happens so fast, you just don't see that something happened and then it become a miracle. And, and that's what's beautiful in this art of manipulate people's mind. I get all of that and I get the technicalities of it. But one of the first illusions you do on stage is where you give somebody a book randomly and they randomly pick a word randomly from any page and you know what it is and you've written it down before they say it. I mean, this stuff leaves the audience speechless and it gets bigger and bigger from there and crescendos in the end to a guy telling a story of how he arrived in Las Vegas and his name and his favorite thing and his favorite food and his favorite. And you've written all this 
this down before he's even said it. The person who I was with genuinely believed that you were some sort of extraordinary being from Mars that could read people's minds. It's very clever what you do and so polished. I guess that's why it's the leading show here in Las Vegas. Well, that's what fascinates me all the time also is I think when the, the magic trick or whatever the, the, the secret is, is, is well done and smart, people, people could forget that it could be a magic trick, that, that something happened because it's invisible. And, and that's what I like in mental magic is because, because there is nothing to see, nothing appear or disappear on stage. So you just have to use your imagination to try to figure out what is this invisible thing is. And it's all about secrets. And I've been fascinated with secrets all my life because some people die and they die with their own secrets and nobody will know about their secret. There's something huge, fascinating about, about a secret. And, and I think it, it captivates people's uh, uh, imagination and, and that's what's turned the show uh, different than a magic show or hypnosis. Or, because a magic show, when an, an elephant appears on stage, even if you don't know where the elephant was, you can imagine that maybe it was uh, below the stage, maybe it was behind the curtain, maybe it's a lightning effect or mirrors. But when someone, when we have two people on stage and I touch one person and the other person on the other side of the, ta of the stage feel touch, your mind absolutely have no idea where to go to find, to find the secret. And, and that's what turns it beautiful, I guess, and, and interesting. And then this thing of hypnosis, which I know a lot of people don't believe in, but when you've seen enough of it, you do end up believing it because you can't hire all these actors. Every show in Vegas can't be hiring 100 people a night. So there you are on stage. Everybody else takes about 30 minutes to hypnotize people here in town. Literally, you have to sit there while there's this big, long process. You do it in about 30 seconds. How is that possible? Well, that's what we call instant induction in, in, the, in the world of hypnosis. Well, I guess because people don't come to my show to be hypnotized and because uh, I have a background as a magician too. I think I, I work during the old show doing effects with people's mind and, and because they don't expect me to hypnotize them, I, uh, I think I can go faster because people have that belief that what I can do m might be real and I already give proof to people before the show that I genuinely have a kind of ability uh, before I hypnotize them. So the, the skeptical part of your mind uh, already is already manipulated and controlled by, by, by what you've seen before. And also because the show is not a hypnosis show. Uh, if I can't hypnotize the person in 20 or 30 seconds, I would just go for something else. But when you see a, a hypnotist show, the guy really has to hypnotize you and you know what's going on and, and it becomes more longer. And it's extraordinary. I mean, on Sunday, you had this girl on stage who was wide awake. She looked brilliant. And then you pressed her forehead and off she went. And then your show was able to begin. It puts an edge in the room as well, doesn't it? There's something about hypnosis that really creates an energy within an audience. And your audience was big on Sunday. I guess for you, you never know what's going to happen next. And that's what's most mesmerizing from my standpoint. It is 100% reliant on the performance of the audience because without them, you don't have a show, do you? This is what turns it exciting and, and that's why I love to do that every day because I wish that with everything that happened on the past, I wish that every day, every next day I will be better than I was the day before because uh, you have to deal with people's reaction and with people's emotion also on stage because it's not easy to be on stage. I want to make them as comfortable as I can. so. So I can go as fast as I can with them. I think it's it's all about speed. Uh, if you go fast with people, you go faster than than their emotions. So you can control their emotions, and you can uh, you always a step in front of them. You understand what I mean? And uh, and and that's what's fascinating. And the, sh the name of the show is Paranormal, and I try to to put everything that people would would love to see if, if the paranormal exists and i'm not sure if paranormal exists but if if it exists it, it will probably look like something like, like like that and i wonder what's going through your head at any one point because you had children who are harder to manipulate because they won't behave you then have guys who have been drinking who you've got to handle them and then women who are very shy you must be able to start a conference with what's going on in your head at any one point in the show because you've got to be ahead of it, behind it, present, forward, backwards. I mean, you're trying to hold the whole thing together like an orchestra. 
I like to to keep my mind busy as busy as I can and and this is probably one of the things that I really enjoy in life and especially when I'm performing uh, you know that I, sometimes I have four or five people on stage and, and all of them are thinking of something and I try to mix uh, to try to do the reveals at the same time and I try to memorize serial bills of, 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 of bills of people in, in in less than one second and I when I was a child I was fascinated with is memorizing the dictionaries and all these things that people don't used to do so when you do that it looks like like a kind of, of miracle for them because uh, sometimes the exp sometimes I just do what I pretend what people think that I pretend to do but but you probably don't think that someone is crazy enough to memorize the dictionary right well all the book that you handed the lady so I think it was 350 pages or something are you seriously telling me that you know every word in that book cover to cover <sighs> I can't talk, Alex, and, and you will never trust a magician, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if tomorrow you tell me that I will amaze people every day by telling them, tell me any word you want and I will tell you where it is on the dictionary, I can swear that I will, that I will work immediately 10, 15 hours a day if it's necessary to create something that the work behind it is such impossible to imagine that you just think that this is not the answer and and that's what it's beautiful in 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 mind reading it's much more work that people believe it is and because you can't imagine someone working so hard to do that people think that you have to have a special gift or special ability or, or it's just easy for you or maybe it's just uh, paranormal and that question is a beautiful question and, and and keep me always motivated in working more and more and more. You're so clever at what you do. You're a craftsman. You have great stage presence as well. And the way you handled your entire show, I thought, was remarkable. I mean, there are so many elements that could go wrong and you look unfazed by all. I guess you've seen it all before at this point and there are no surprises. No, there's always surprises. And again, that's what excites me. I think you know when the pilot on the, air, on the airplane is good, when, 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 some, when everything goes wrong. And this is the moment that you see, yeah, the guy was brilliant because every, everything, everybody is alive right now. And this is that, that moment. I want these kind of moments to come because I, can, I, I know that some people will understand that it should have a problem on stage and the guy handled that very, very nicely. And, and that's where your imagination comes because it's all, sometimes you have to improvise something. And, but you never improvise 100%. You, you, you know how to improvise because you've done that all your life and, and, and your mind just goes faster and you have the solution just right away. And for you, this is living the dream now. You're here in Las Vegas, which is the place you've always wanted to be and you're doing your show right center strip. I mean, Bally's is one of the oldest casinos in Las Vegas that's still there that they haven't knocked down, but it's right in the heart next to the brand new Cromwell and Flamingo opposite uh, the wonderful Caesars Palace. I mean, you're right in the heart of Vegas. It couldn't be better in terms of location. Yeah, Bally's uh, is the center of the action. Bali is in the center of the strip. I can't believe that I realized this dream. Sometimes I, I see so many shows in Las Vegas and I see so much talent. Uh, I feel blessed that, that, that I'm here and sometimes it, it's hard to believe that I'm still here and I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm scared that it will finish. But, uh, but I'm a very optimist person. I, I, I want to believe that uh, there's a reason why I'm here and I, hopefully it's the beginning of a, of a beautiful story because... I think it, my dreams will, will never end. And it's dreams to, to amaze people. It's not something about me. It's hard to believe but when a performer say that, but it's generally for, to see people's reaction. This has no price, I guess. You know, artists are some of the most driven people in life. And, uh, but I think that when, when, when the performer touch people's heart and people's soul, that second becomes, uh, becomes like crystal it uh, and you know that even if you spend all your life working on something on that second that moment I think it was a, a thousand lifetime and again when you think about your act it's magical that you can take this anywhere in the world in a suitcase and do your show for 90 minutes there are so few performers can do that there's Elton and his piano he can probably do it and then guys like you I mean an illusionist can't take that show on the road I just saw Chris Angel last week he's got three planes going out with three trucks and he's got 50 people I mean it's amazing that you've found a way of creating a show just out of your own talent and discipline 
Well, uh, I started as an illusionist, so I, I had a lot of props before. And I remember that I was, I, I was doing an act where a car appeared on stage. And I remember that I need 11 assistants backstage to make appear the car. And the only thing that I was doing is just pushing the curtain <laughs> and, and, and everybody disappeared and the car was here and I was the only one that people was applauding. And I kind of feel uncomfortable with that. Uh, and I truly, w I was willing to build something that I knew that every minute of my life, if I work, uh, I was willing to do something that people can't do because it takes too long to, to practice. It takes too long to perfect it. And you really have to be willing to spend all your life to that. Uh, otherwise, it couldn't be, it couldn't be copying. And, and that's why I, I believe that people can't copy my show with millions of dollars, which is, uh, I know that a lot of performers are afraid of that here, that someone can steal your show. I think uh, my show can't be uh, purchased with, 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 with money. You, you have to work very, very hard. So I guess that people are not interested in, in, in doing that. My definition of a Las Vegas star is a man who can walk on a stage and captivate an audience with his pure talent, but there's nothing like seeing one guy with a microphone and you're that. Frederick, great to talk to you. Frederick De Silva is on at Bally's in Las Vegas at 4 p.m. and you can see his magical show. It's incredible. It's called Paranormal and basically it's him reading minds, coming up with what they're thinking. It's very, very, very worrying. What am I thinking now? You're thinking that you're doing a very good job and the interview was great, and I think so too. No, well, I'm thinking we better go because we've got another show to get to. It's been great meeting you. You're one of the nicest people I've ever met in Las Vegas. Thank you for your time. My pleasure, Alex. Thank you so much. Lovely. Good. Let's see.